Hi, I'm Chastity Euler, Northwest Ohio Territory Manager with Pioneer. We're here near Delta, Ohio with Dick Snyder and Kay Tempe. Uh, Dick and Kay have been with their agency, Snyder Sales and Service, for over 40 years. Uh, quite the legacy with Pioneer. We're in their plot. And Dick, you want to talk a little bit about your growing season here during the middle of July. You got a little bit of rain last Just week. Just a little bit. It varies across the area. We had guys that had four inches. We had guys that had just a few tents. So it's been a challenging summer after a pretty pretty nice planting season. Mm -hmm. And then we had a lot of replant that went along with it. Afterwards, it kind of took away from the niceness of the planting season. But Yeah. And Kay, you are such a big part of the agency with all of the plots and the harvesting. And tell us a little bit about how many entries you have in this plot and when it was planted. It was planted April 24th and um, it was about 35,000 um, for our population and I think we have a total of 40 counting all of our checkers of all of our plot entries for this plot. So we thank uh, Kay and Dick for planting the mini plots and research that they do um, for us here. And we also have John Shanehalls, our field agronomist for Northwest Ohio, is going to give us an agronomy update. So the corn that we're standing in is just a few days away from tassel and silking. Many of fields in the area are starting to reach that point. Some things to watch for that we're noticing in those fields. First of all, some pest pressure. Um, Japanese beetles, rootworm adults, even some flea beetles can be found in corn fields. Main concern, be watching for silk clipping. And um, if that starts to become an issue where those silks are clipped back to a half inch or less with pollination still occurring, um, a, a insecticide to make sure pollination can continue may be warranted. I expect that would be pretty limited, but there has been some reports of silk clipping. Fungicide applications become um, a topic to consider around the tasseling and silking time frame. With dry weather, foliar disease pressure has been pretty minimal so far, but on high management fields or high yield potential fields, disease history fields, those fungicide applications can help protect gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, and tar spot, where we've seen that come in later on in the summer with heavy dews and showers. Um, so fungicides co still could be considered. In the soybeans, very similar type things, minor pest pressure so far. The threshold for Japanese beetle or flea beetle feeding is about 15% defoliation at the reproductive stages. Most fields are far away from that threshold still at this point. And timing for fungicides on soybeans would be best at the late R3 or R4 growth stage. Again, pressure is low with diseases, but some growers do still see consistent benefits to those fungicide applications, even in a drier summer. Jazzy is going to talk a little bit about these products that we're standing by, pretty excited about. Yes, so a new product that we introduced last year in 2019, unfortunately didn't get to see across a lot of acres due to all the prevent plant was 963, P0963 AM. And then we're also standing right in between P0935 AM. These are a great package. Um, one of these, these products both can fit across a lot of our different soil types across Ohio, especially those really heavier, heavy clay type soil types more defensive characteristics for strong early season emergence, that excellent pioneer grain quality that we've all known and come to love. And then also 963 in particular brings awesome late season plant health and excellent stocks. So two great hybrids to definitely make sure that you mark down when your pioneer rep comes to visit you and uh, brings you a new seed guide to talk over some of the great products that we have to offer for the 2021 planting season. So thank you and look forward to talking to you next week. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.